Welcome back everyone, another episode of Rick's Gadgets. Today I want to show you how HomeSeer can track device status changes and how you can graph those changes um, in your HomeSeer system. Uh, for example, maybe you want to see how many times you have motion in a room or how many times the door opens or closes uh, and you want to track how much, uh, you know, each number on those devices. Uh, so today what I want to do is I'm going to show you a third-party plug-in um, from Jono and uh, I'm going to show you how I've set it up to monitor my HVAC system. So diving into it here, um, what I've got is here is my thermostat information. <clears throat> and what I was trying to capture was how many times and how long does my system run each day and wanted to come up and find a way to track the operation on off cycles and how long it's going from idle to running state and what i came up with is it's called um uh, let's see here the database charting utilities and this is from john oo and he's created a bunch of plugins Please donate to him if you use these because these are all free to use, but he does want donations if you can, so please help him out. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but I will leave a link to his website. And what you do is you have to go into the HomeSeer server and you have to enter guest, guest to, to get the, the site. And then you can go into his downloads page and you can find the specific um software that you want to get. He's got many in there and because these are third party you have to do them uh, a manual install which is a little tricky. It's just not clicking a button and it gets installed. But it is fairly straightforward. He has great documentation on it. Um, I have it pulled up here. He um, This is from the download and he has a PDF in there. Talks about how to install this. I'm not going to go into too much detail on installing this, but it, it is pretty straightforward. Um, he tells you where to copy each of the files into which, which folders. Um, and if I go over here to my home seer server, this is uh, I've remoted into my server. What you want to do is to go to your program files, home seer three, and you'll see the various um, folders here. You know where he's saying copy it to the bin. It's going to go into the bin and it, so forth and once you do all those you'll probably you'll need to stop and restart the home seer system and that's getting the database charting utility installed on home seer and like i said i know that's quick uh, but this is very straightforward it is a little more complex if you're not familiar with a lot of uh, you know i guess moving of copying of files but it is uh, straightforward he has great documentation on it and that's why I highly recommend if you use this and decide to use it, please kick him a donation. I've done it many a times. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come over here and go back to my home seer. And what I've got is on my thermostats, I'm able to see my idle versus working state on the operation. And what I've decided to do is in the charting utility, I want to check how many times it cuts on and how many times it it I basically I'm counting the time from the time it comes on to the time it comes off to get a run state so up here at the top you can see I have my counters and I've got a timer for my downstairs and upstairs and as you can see my downstairs of course runs a lot longer because my upstairs is really not used much and you can see the cycle times and this is for today and it doesn't matter whether it's the heating or air conditioner. I'm just counting the cycles, basically of the fan coming on and for how long it runs. So that way I can track it winter and summer. So to do this, um, we're going to go over and to get into the, the charting part of it, it is a little, there's nothing on the, the, the links here that will get you to it. So what you have to do is you have to go to your um, URL or whatever you're using for your home seer. And as you can see here, uh, mine's just my IP address because I'm local. And you want to put in this johnoodbsetup.asp. So it's an ASP page. 
And once you hit enter, you're going to come up with something that looks like this. All right, first thing we want to do is create a database. So in here, I've already got my HVAC um, and a temperature. Like I said, you can log temperatures with this as well if you've got a device. So this, this is more than just counting. You can use it for a multitude of things. So you're just going to create a new database. And in here, you're just going to give the database a name. And you're going to give it some parameters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this. But I'm going to go back and show you how I've set it up. But this is just when you hit it, this is what you're going to be presented with. And just name it. So when you look at it, like mine, here is, um, let me go over to, let me go back. So I'm going to go back here and go into HVAC. So here is my HVAC, which is actually a table two. Now this is where you want to come in, make sure you're not in demo mode. And I'm going to name it, and it's a fixed timer, and once a day. Because what I want to do is, this is telling you when to reset it. So for like my run times and my cycle counts. Because if you, let's say you want to track it for a year, you would put in here your duration time. So you can, if you want to see how long something runs within an hour, you can do it by hours, minutes, seconds. I mean, whatever you want to put in here. And I purge it after 480 days because it does it per day. So what you're going to do is come in here and, like I said, set these up for your data sources. So what, what you do is you just go in through and select what source you want to count. So on this one, um, I've got my downstairs cycles, which is what I'm labeling it as, doing no rounding. Do the same thing for the upstairs. And then when I come down here, I'm going to do um, downstairs the operation times. So in here, you want to do the, um, basically do counters and timers and do the times. And this is to setting up each of your devices. So once you get the devices set up, and now you can go over and if you want to chart it, you can chart it or you can go in and add the, the counters to your um, home seer screen. So what you'll need is you'll need these device numbers to go in there and look and set it up. So for example, here on the downstairs, I just set up a new, new um, device and it's a 374 and that corresponds to the... Um, 374 here, the downstairs counter. Now that gets the um, that gets the device information on the screen. It'll get you these four parameters here. Now you can take it a step further, and let me see if I can pull up the charting. Actually, I don't want to show too much here because it's so big. Um, let's do check all. Now, another neat thing here is, here's my charts of how it runs. And, and what I do is I run this chart every day at 12 o'clock. And it tells me my cycles of the uh, downstairs and upstairs. And as you can see, we've been having a little bit of a warm spell. So our heat has slowly tapered off. And it kind of shows here. Um, and you can see it up and down. And I just run it for the past five days. So now to get these charts showing, you're going to go back over to the, the setup page and you're going to go to chart creation. And in here, you can select what you want to do. So let's just do uh, downstairs and you can pick out the type of chart you want. So here I have the, the, the column chart, you know, which is the 3D columns, semi-transparent. And I just recommend playing around with these. Because what I have it set for is I have, you know, the, the axes, you can do different axes, you know, your ups and your downs, depending on uh, the, the data that you're showing, especially like your timers and counters. Um, so it gets a little bit different when you, you know, you do the, the, the counting times, which is the operation times. So you can go in here and play around with it. Like I said, you can go to the uh, dynamic charting. And you can pick 
a value and you can pick what values you want to run for and just to see how it's going to look and let's go back and change the date let's change it let's go back two weeks and you could do a line chart you could you just kind of see what each chart looks like and just chart it and here's the chart times this is for the operation time and the cycle times so you see my cycles and then the run times and so you can change this to you know you know, let's say you want to do a column. You go over, change it to a column, and there's your column. But anyway, I hope this was informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button, and I appreciate you stopping by and checking out my channel. Thanks, and have a great day.